Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Gypsy Poet Radio here on blogtalkradio.com front slash gypsy poet. I'm the gypsy poet, and I've got my wing girl, my, my crazy lady, the, f- fab- the fabulous, the funny, the mesmerizing, the relentless girl, George. And what an afternoon. Always, 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 this woman has brought some wonderful people on my radio program, on our radio program, I should say, and she has brought so much joy to me and so to several of my listeners out there. I would like to introduce the amazingly talented Hollywood film director, musician, and artist, Yuri Cole. Is everybody with me? Yes, I'm yeah. here. Good, I'm here. wonderful. All right. Hey, Yuri, doesn't Yuri stand for George? Yep, Yuri means George, yep. In what language? Uh, well, my, mine is Estonian. <laughs> Estonian? It's Estonian, yeah. It's right near. Estonian. It's right near Latvia, near Lithuania. Oh, okay. It's a okay. tiny little country. There's a lot of people named George. Van Morris's first name is George, and Commander mm-hmm. Cody's name is George, and my name is George. All great <laughs> yeah. artists have the name of George, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. Yuri. Uh, 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 when did you start making films? Yes. Oh, uh, I think I made my first film when I was twelve. Well, I tied, wow, you started I, 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 tied, I tied my I tied my cousin to a ladder and that was that was the railroad track. <laughs> and my brother my brother and cousin had a fight over spilt milk in a saloon. <laughs> Did they shoot each other? Yeah. Yeah. Oh good. It was cool. There's a lot was of fun. blood and guts in huh? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Would you use ketchup? I, 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 what? You use ketchup for blood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, but I I just got hooked from an early age into making films and and I've been making them for quite a while and I I still enjoy it very much. I noticed your brother makes guitars. I've heard of, I've heard of cold guitars before. Yeah, he my brother builds guitars up in Portland, Oregon. He um he's built guitars for the guys from Sublime, Mike Watt, and also um. The guys from Modest Mouth, the Long Beach Dev All Stars. He's also built guitars for real famous um, jazz musicians too. He uh, mm-hmm. he's pretty. He's people love his his guitars, and uh, I just saw him today. As a matter of fact, he, he so was, talent runs in your family, huh? Mm-hmm. I suppose so. Yeah. What did my your dad, mother do? Was she an artist too? No, my mom was a uh, my mom was a. Uh, voracious reader and oh, she was kind of a homemaker she was a voracious reader but my dad was a, a great artist and he nobody ever saw his work except for maybe a few friends so um uh he's uh he he passed away a while back and so um ever since then i've been planning a uh a uh an exhibit of his work so great. he'll finally awesome. get, he'll finally get his due his work's pretty amazing that's great yeah, when did you start someone. playing music? When did you start playing music? Oh, uh, well, I played clarinet as a kid and sang, but um, I didn't really start playing music until I was about 32. My mom um, sent me a harmonica in the mail from a, <laughs> from a, for a Christmas present, and I started carrying it around. And then uh, uh, then um, after a while, I started blowing on it, and... Um, <laughs> Three, four years later, I got good enough to play in front of other people, and then people started inviting me to sit in with them, and um, and then I started doing it regular. And um, when I met when I met you, Dale, George, um, uh, I was um, I think we met in San Francisco uh, around the blue lamp. At the lamp blue stage. lamp. Yeah, the blue so lamp I, had a jam session uh, that was kind of. Or blues, I guess. On oh, Gary, yeah. it was on Gary. It was back in about 1995. <laughs> oh yeah, it was really fun. It was really fun. And um, Patrick and, uh, ran it, didn't he? Patrick was that? Yeah, idea? yeah. Patrick, Patrick ran the open mic, and then for a while, Eric McFadden did. Huh? And um, and then we'd have all kinds of great players sit in, like um, Edna Love and uh, Clarence Fillmore Slim. Um, you remember him from a movie called American 
uh, I think it's called American um, Thug or American Pimp. It's called American Pimp. He was a star of a movie. Because not only did he, you know, play music, he also did other things on the side. There was a There's little a Japanese American. girl named Toy, too. She just found oh, me yeah. recently on, on uh, Facebook, so she's still in San Francisco playing. Oh, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, San Francisco, San Francisco is a great place to play. It's a great place to live and play. And it's expensive, but it's it's a fantastic place to, to hang out and do, you know, meet musicians. And it's got a good style. Well, I ran but, uh, into it again in Berkeley in, in uh, the Missouri Lounge. You start playing here oh, yeah. at my latest hangout. <laughs> yeah, the Missouri Lounge is a fun gig. It's Wednesday nights. And um, they have a lot of uh, musicians I've never met to come in there and play. And So the, the guy who runs it, Paul. Um, Paul Putt. Some, Paul Putt, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Paul, yeah. He, I sit in with him on occasion, and then I've sat in with Girl George again. That's always fun. Mm-hmm. Have you seen I, his artwork? Have you seen Paul's artwork? He's really good. No, I haven't seen his artwork. Well, he, he makes a flyer that. every week for the open mic, and then he does regular art too. But he's he's amazing. You should you should oh, check cool. him out sometime. <laughs> yeah, I and I, I I will. I I um, you know as you know I love doing documentaries about artists and uh, yes and uh, I I wanted to ask about that you actually have a, um, a, a series on YouTube called uh, the art world can you tell us a little bit about that yeah well I started doing documentaries um, about artists way back in the mid 80s and uh, in 1991 I did a documentary about Mark DeSuvero who's a real famous sculptor sculptor you can see his work um uh, over down by Pier 51, in um, mm. in uh, or Pier 41 in uh, San Francisco, his sculptures are real gigantic things. They're built with cranes and stuff, and made out of steel girders and things. And um, so he, um, I did a documentary about him, and it ended up about three, four years ago. It ended up in the archives of American Art at the Smithsonian cool. Institute. So I, so I um, got the bug again to do more docs about artists. So I've been doing those for about three or four years again. And, um, and uh, you know, I've got all kinds of different artists yes. that I show. Matt Gleason has been on the mm-hmm. show. That, that she's, He's a friend of Girl George's. Yeah, mm-hmm. Matt Gleason, and, he, he used to uh, do artwork uh, while the Starving Band would play at Al's Bar No Talent Night. He would, he would paint while they sang, Five fucking minutes so I gotta go to work. <laughs> hilarious. Yes, yes. Yeah, there's those Al's bar days were fun. I may have met you back then too, girl. girl well, girl. I was there every every no talent night for about twelve years. You're getting to miss me. You you know the oh, owner sure of the I place, the guy that. they call Al. His real name is Mark. Yeah, I, I know the guy. Yeah, I think he's an artist. He used to harass all the acts. He, he, he'd say over the microphone, we promise no talent and we deliver. And if you were on the stage more than 15 minutes, he would turn off all the electricity. Not only your mics, but he had control of the electricity up there. So all your amps went off, too. So there was no going overtime there. You were off of there. And then he, he harassed them into throwing cups at the people he didn't like. You know, they threw cups at, at the acts they didn't like, and Mark would <laughs> go them into it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that that must have been. That was, I, I remember those days. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. So um yeah, so I, I do I I do quite a bit of painting of my own too. And um mm-hmm. uh, I'll be showing some of my paintings with my dad, um, in, in our show and then um I got a I've got a um a new thing that started I'm starting called the Venice Institute of Contemporary Art, which is a um wow. kinda like a museum, but it's mm-hmm. right now it's it's we're doing a series of pop up events. Um, you oh. know, uh, we're 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 doing showing a whole bunch of the art world videos at a thing called Brit Week in Los Angeles at the beginning of May. So, so you fun. live in Venice now? Yeah, I live in Venice Beach. Venice mm. Beach, that's a cool place. I I lived in LA for like twelve years. I lived in Venice yeah. for about a month. <laughs> yeah, 
can't miss it. It's 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 still the same. It's still it still attracts a lot of artists, and uh, <coughs> it's got a very long history of um, I can see that. of of, of great uh, a great artist. You wrote some movies too. What do you like horror movies? I've seen a few horror uh, movies of yours up here. <laughs> well, let's see. I um I I wrote a movie called The Venice Tale, which is semi uh-huh. autobiographical. It's uh a chase thriller set in uh, Venice Beach, and that we are we are um, we've shot a trailer for that. We're raising money to make that movie, and um, there's another project that I'm working on called The Diplomat, which is a kind of a family history. But I've got a few other films that I've done in the past that <coughs> I did one. I was one of the producers on a movie called Cash Crop, which is about the medical marijuana industry. <laughs> and, uh, All my friends were like that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won uh we won the high times movie of the year. And then uh and then and we also won the Maui Film Festival. And uh Very cool. and then Congratulations. Yeah. So that's that's fun. It's fun stuff. Making movies is fun. What movie mm. did you make with Peter Bond Do- Do- how do you say Von Dogovich? But- Bogdanovich, well, he's actually slated to play one of the roles in A Venice Tale when we get that done. Oh, he's going to um, act in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's going to act in it. And then um, I, I did an interview with him uh, over at, um, he and Quentin Tarantino are very good friends. So about hmm. two years ago, I did an interview of uh, Peter Bogdanovich over at um, Quentin's house, Quentin Tarantino's house. I don't know him personally but it was cool being at his place and um uh i got a kick out of it because when i was asking questions um i sat in a director's chair that was quentin's director's chair uh-huh. for that movie um jackie brown cool oh cool you you Very know cool karen cool. black too there's a picture of you with karen black oh yeah i know karen real well she's a fantastic actress she's been in hundreds of movies she was. She played opposite uh, Jack Nicholson in Five Years Pieces. Yeah, um, yeah, it was she, a great. She, that was my favorite movie of all time, <laughs> especially yeah, she, that she, bit about the toast. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, she, Karen is a Karen's a fantastic lady. She's a great actress, and uh, I love her to death. She's real cool. <laughs> yeah. She makes. She still makes at least two or three pictures every year. <clears throat> so she, she's she's done it. She's done tons of movies. So you write and you direct and you produce and you're an yeah. artist and you're a harmonica player and you play keyboards and boy you do everything, don't you? <laughs> well, I try to I try to keep myself busy and anything creative is is where it's at for me. Yeah, I just dance around in the arts and go from one to the other and that way I don't get boring. Just I wanted to ask you about one of the films that I saw on your YouTube channel. Um, you have one about uh, Cheech Marin and uh, collecting Chicano art, and, uh, and called "The Perfect Storm." Can Can you tell me how that evolved? How um, How Mr. Marin got involved in your project uh, in that part of your project? Well, basically, um, I attend just about every uh, art fair or festival that is anywhere near me. And um, mm-hmm. I happened to go to the Palm Springs Art Festival last uh, last in 2012, and mm-hmm. um, and Cheech was uh, being honored there by um, by another friend of mine, Peter Frank, who's a very well known art critic. And mm-hmm. so Cheech was there, and I asked the publicity people if I could do an interview with them. Me and my partner actually did the interview. My partner's mm-hmm. Dr. Judy Bloom, who has her own radio show. Um, but but anyway, um, sh- uh, we uh, we uh, we interviewed uh, Cheech Marin, and he talked to us all about how he got started collecting art, and, and um, how he sort of ended up at the right place at the right time. He has the largest collection of Chicano art in the world, and his his collection has been traveled around the world. It's been seen at the L.A. County Museum of Art and several other museums across the country. And um, at first, when he was buying the, that artwork, he was considered, you know, he he was kind of laughed at 
but eventually um, he kind of proved them, proved everybody mm-hmm. wrong in terms of you know because he had an he had an aesthetic, he had his, his own, mm-hmm. he had a good eye. He still yeah. does, mm-hmm. and he just he just moved to a big new place in Pacific Palisades, and uh, we plan on doing a follow up interview with with the Is he an yeah. artist himself, or does he just collect the art? Yeah, he. He just collects. Oh, okay. oh, so he just collects, so he doesn't do any art himself. Um, no, no, he's just, he's just mm-hmm. a collector, but just a collector is, like, being a collector is a very important thing because what that does mm-hmm. is that provides that provides the artist with their living and, um, and places places the artwork in a, in a context where it can be appreciated by other people. Um, so um, it's really important to have that whole that whole thing, you know, it's important to have mm-hmm. people who are willing to spend money on art or me, or even music, you know. That's one of the things mm-hmm. that yes. bugs me about the, the, the state of the music business right now because a lot of these, a lot of kids don't, they, they get their music for free and mm-hmm. they don't see, they don't, they don't seem to understand some of them, I bet most of them do, but they don't seem to understand that if the artist doesn't get paid, there's not going to be any art, you know. Exactly. Because, the artists have to survive somehow, and they can't. They can't do it. If they can't do it making their art, then there's a lot of talent that's going to be wasted because, um, because, because people expect stuff, something for nothing. And I think mm-hmm. we need to treat our artists with respect, with love, and with um, and with um, a living, a decent living, yes. not have them be poor all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I have to and agree I'm, with I'm that. Saying, I'm, I'm <laughs> saying that. I'm saying that straight from my back pocket right now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, I understand that because that's. Um, I, I'm the same way. I am. I too am a musician, and I write music. Um, I um, I am a I'm a graphics designer <laughs> by nature, but you know, but I do appreciate it because I grew up around it. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Uh, my mom's a painter. That's why. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask. Um, with your documentary series, The Art World, um, do you uh, want to expand on various other places with it? Oh, yeah. Like, we, do, well, the, yes. the idea the idea for the show is um, our, our, basically our tagline is the greatest cities on the planet as seen through the greatest, their greatest artists. So we want to I go all that. over the world and, um, mm-hmm. and film. The, problem, the, the biggest issue we've had is that... Um, no offense to you know people mm-hmm. who watch this kind of stuff, but our competition is ice road truckers and pawn stars and swamp people. The you know, Kardashians. <laughs> the, the, yeah, the Kardashians. Those are the kind of people we have to compete with. And, when and South with, Shore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of good television out there, but there should be more. Yes. <laughs> Pardon me. I apologize. Yes. Mm-hmm. Got a tiny little cough today, but um. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I'll try to keep the phone away from my mouth when I do it next time. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Actually, I'm en- I'm really enjoying this because uh, as I was watching some of the documentaries between last night and and uh, the, and of course this morning, um, I, I just I'm I'm actually fascinated about how much the art world really fascinates you, and um, it, it actually brings a joy to me because it hits so close to home. And um, I, I really would like to see more of this, like if you go across the country, because down here where I'm from, you see, girl George and I never met. <laughs> we do this radio show. She's in California. I'm in Texas. And uh, Texas is, uh, especially where my town is at, the, uh, the, there's an expanding literary community. There's an expanding arts community. I mean, massive, massive. And it's um, and we, we, have a, we have a lot of local artists here that come and exhibit their work. And your statement in one of the interviews that I saw that said, get your get – Get your work out there. You know, go to these shows. Go do that. Your truth will be seen and heard, and that that really hits close to my heart because there's a lot of that here where I'm at, and there's a, there's a lot of color, a lot of diversity, and and it really and art really speaks here where I'm where I'm centered in, and so I I, I would really like to see more of this. Um, this kind of this kind of documentary that you do, and this kind of exposure you give to people. I mean, I really I want to see it go so much further. I really do because I'm very honestly I'm very proud of it. 
and and I'm also yeah. proud of you. Yes, and I'm very proud of you as a person, and what and the things that you do. And I, like I said, my blessing for you would would really to see this go further and expose people to the art world and the the whole creative realm, the way that you talk about it, and the way you get others to be more exposed to it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's really important to. Uh, recognize creativity um there are certain mm-hmm. societies there's certain societies that recognize it more than others i think mm-hmm. i think yes. that um like like for example in ireland if you're an artist you don't pay taxes and in south korea uh, for another for another example um mm-hmm. you you are actually um given compensation for being an artist um mm-hmm. in order that you can practice your work um there's there's um you know i think a c- culture that a culture that supports its artists are the ones that are going to last the longest in people's minds because if all you if all you spend your energy doing is building bombs and and um, and thinking about warfare, you know, then you you really can you're really barking up the wrong tree. You're actually, you know, there's a lot there's a lot more that that can be done with creative the creative spirit than just what Absolutely. we're doing now. Yeah, you know, I think. So I just think it's really important to uh, recognize creative people like such as such as Girl George and such as um, <laughs> such as you know whoever else is out there. You know, I mean, and there's so many people out there that are just unknowns and that are fantastic mm-hmm. at what they yes. do. And uh, and I think that um, you know it's funny because I've had people come to me and say, "Why don't you do a?" documentary about your own paintings and I'm like well no I can't do that then it wouldn't be the legit so mm. you know if 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 so I have to do my own thing which is like you know I I submit I submit, submit my work to galleries galleries you know the galleries the galleries responsibility to, uh, to sort of make their artists um get seen and and um and that's that's kind of what I do with all the other artists I'm kind of like a curator of mm-hmm. their work, but I also have to create something that speaks to their work in a way that is going to um, get them attention and um, speak correctly about their work in terms of its his context and history. And you know, so I I spend a great deal of my time earning trust with mm-hmm. my artists that I show, and and they count on me to. To, to 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 represent them in the best possible light, and you know, frankly, I, I don't have time to be critical about work. If I like it, then I then you know, it takes a great deal of time to do these documentaries, most of them anyhow, and um, mm-hmm. so um, so that energy has to be, um, you know, po- positive and good. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Absolutely, I agree with that. Um, Let's see. Um, I wanted to ask a little bit about uh, what you do musically, because we mentioned that earlier in the interview. Um, uh, Girl George had mentioned that you play various different instruments. Um, uh, can I well, ask? I only, um, I only play two different instruments. Okay. Just the harmonica and the keyboards. And the keyboards, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm you still getting. I've still got a lot to learn on when it comes to the keyboards. Oh. But, I, but I, I do play. Oh, you hit home with me there too, because I play piano myself. <laughs> Yeah, piano is fun. It's a great instrument. Yes, yes, it's a it's the most complete instrument. Don't get me into the history of that because I won't. <laughs> um, I, I, let's see. Uh, coming back a little bit more about your um, about your filmmaking. Um, what um, what other what other create what other creations do you want to see manifested in the future in your in um in, in your filmography? Well, I mean, I I, I think you know I want to make a Venice Tale really badly. I want to mm-hmm. also make The Diplomat, which is um, a script that nobody's read yet except for a few people. That's that has to do with my family history, and um, there's my 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 it, one of its lead characters is named. It's based on my uncle Serge. My uncle Serge, who's also passed away, was a mm. he was my bro- my my dad's half brother, and he was um, he was in he had a, an amazing history. He um, fought for both. For the Germans, the Latvians, and the Russians during the Second World War, 
um, mm-hmm. because he because he kept getting conscripted into armies that would run would run over certain areas. So like they'd pick him up and put a, a Russian uniform on him. I mean a Soviet <laughs> uniform on him, and he he the first chance he got he'd take that off and run away from the army. Then the Germans picked him up, and he as soon as he got was able to he got clear of them, and then later he fought for the Latvians and uh, he ended up in the Gulag in the, in Siberia for ten years. Wow! And, he, and then he escaped to the West uh, later in his life, and um, and uh, so that's that's a pretty amazing story. Yeah. And uh, so that's it's it it the, the the diplomat takes place from around 1909 all the way up to 1989. So it's and it and it. It chronicles a lot of our family history, but it's dramatized, so it's, it's going to make a fun movie. But it's, it's a lot of the stories are real. Amazing! Wow, so it's cool. It's fun. it's fun, but those kind of movies take a lot of time and a lot of effort. You know, um, there's mm-hmm. a movie I did. There's a movie that I was the one of the producers on. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, I was the production manager. It was called American Cowslip, and we um, mm-hmm. we. Um, we shot. We I read the script the first time in 2006. We didn't shoot it till the fall of 2008, and we didn't get it into into, into distribution until late 2010, early 2011. Um, so that's a five-year period that it took us to get a movie, you know, put together and um, and uh, and seen. So. Things take time. It's it's you got to have a lot of patience and you got to have a lot of tenacity. You get yes. movies done. It's not, yes. it, they're not just they're not easy. No, they're not, yeah. and they require a lot of time and they require they require a lot of attention. And uh, to put all the pieces together is very very tedious, and you and you really got to have patience for them. Um, I'll, I'll ex- probably explain later, but uh, in the meantime, I just like I said, it's been a joy to have you on the radio program this afternoon. I mean, wow, girl George, you are amazing. Well, let's let's plug Wednesday night at, um, at uh, if there's anybody out there and wants to come on Wednesday night to the Missouri Lounge in Berkeley. Uh, in Berkeley, um, that's mm-hmm. right on San Pablo, and um, we know we always like new people to come down. And uh, what else should we plug, girl George? Oh, I don't know. Please check out Yuri Cole's film um, uh, film series on YouTube called Art World. It is absolutely riveting, amazing, and just absolutely groundbreaking. And it exposes an art movement that is really beautiful and colorful. And it has, a, I mean, he's got a lot to say in these films that he has created. Um, um, some short, some long, but the commentary in it is absolutely substantial. Um, so please check that out on, on YouTube. Let's take a look at the artworld.net for, for more of these uh, these wonderfully done documentaries on <laughs> art. Really, uh, really awesome stuff. Wow. I mean, the commentary is, is phenomenal, um, especially with uh, some of the statements that people make in the films of uh, what they have to say is really out there and really to the point and very, very honest. Very, very few people I see do that. And I, I love the rawness of it. I love the the, the uh, just the all around uh, I wouldn't say roughness, but I have to say that I just the whole vibe basically is very real and it's very cool. I want everyone to see this. It's really, really fascinating. And for those of you that love art, the same message goes for you too. Whether you paint it or you just love it, go out, see it, expose it, put your stuff out there, like Yuri says in the films. Wow. <laughs> so, girl George, you got anything you want to add here? Oh, he's also on Facebook. You can find him yes. on Facebook. Yes, you can find him on Facebook as well. So And check out very, all our yes. all our all our other radio programs. This is our twelfth yes. one. So yes, we've got a lot is. of cool 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 people that's been on the show. And more coming yes. up. We've got S. A. Griffin from LA, yes. the poet from LA. <laughs> yes. Do you know S. Yes. A. Griffin? Uh no. Yuri? No. He's he's an LA, LA poet. Awesome. Oh, far, far out, and we got out. Fish Karma too. You remember Fish Karma? You yes. played Els Bar. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I remember. God is a groovy guy, hunk it down. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, as, as 
we're actually out of time, but I just want to say thank you, Girl George. Say it with me, people. Girl George. <laughs> she is awesome and relentless and just absolutely mystical. And, of course, to my guest, to our guest, Yuri Cole. Thank you so thank you, very thank much for calling in. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, thank you very much for having me on your show. I very much appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. Fun talking I, to you. I'll see yes. you on Wednesday. I'll see you on Wednesday, Girl George. Yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. And, <laughs> and, we'll, and we guys. ho yes, yes, and we hope to have you on again soon. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Yes, you too. Bye bye. All right, this is the Gypsy Poet and Girl George saying adio for now. Ciao.
Oh, just 